Hey friends, welcome back. So we're going to talk about cholesterol today. Thank you so much for being here. It looks like we're about live. So we're going to talk about the U-shaped association between elevated levels of cholesterol and reduce all cause and cardiovascular specific mortality, drawing upon several recently published studies, uh, one of which we have talked about before, uh, but we're also going to talk about this recently published study titled U-shaped relationship with non-HDL cholesterol with all, all cause and cardiovascular mortality in men without statin therapy. So while we're waiting for our friends to get on, I just want to share with you this image because I think this is just incredibly fascinating. And you might be wondering, why are we still talking about cholesterol. Isn't that issue solved? Many of you have reconciled uh, with yourselves uh, after improving your health, reducing carbohydrate intake and processed food intake and noticing improvements in metabolic health. But as a side, you could say benefit or side effect of that, oftentimes your LDL cholesterol increases and this causes your primary healthcare practitioner to be a little bit concerned about your risk for developing cardiovascular disease. So I share with you these articles because these are the most common questions that I get when I'm working with clients. And as a non-physician, I can't tell them what to do. I just want to share the evidence with you here because it takes a long time for frontline primary health professionals, internal medicine doctors, family medicine doctors, to start to implement what is being recognized in the peer-reviewed academic medical literature. And essentially, you know, what a common theme herein is especially over the age of 60, high non-HDL cholesterol levels are actually protective against all-cause mortality, even severe COVID-19, as well as cardiovascular disease. This is known as the cholesterol paradox. And in today's live session, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But first, I just want to thank you all for being here. If you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Any questions that you have, just leave them in the chat section. Uh, please hit that like button. If you're joining live and you want a friend to get this information live or ask any questions, please feel free to share this video with them as a direct text message. So, there's also other reasons why we're talking about this, as we're going to post tomorrow. Uh, Stanford University randomized people, twins actually, to go on a vegan diet versus an omnivorous diet for, for eight weeks. And the primary outcome in this eight-week study was looking at changes in LDL cholesterol levels. And that's what the scientists really focused on. And there was a significant difference in the uh, between group differences in LDL cholesterol reduction in favoring the vegan dieters. But what was omitted from this analysis or really not talked about extensively is changes in triglycerides and HDL actually went in the wrong direction in the vegan dieters compared to the folks that were randomized to eat an omnivorous diet. And I want to share with you again a little bit more about why just focusing on LDL cholesterol is not telling the whole story when it comes to cardiometabolic disease risk. So that's why we're talking about this. Stay tuned. Uh, please subscribe to the channel because tomorrow we're going to do a really deep breakdown uh, of that particular study by Chris Gardner's group over at Stanford. You may remember they did the diet fit study where they compared a low uh, fat diet to a low carb, high fat diet. Uh, over the course of a year and looked at outcomes back in 2018. Uh, we reviewed that paper back then as well. And uh, some interesting findings from this one. Needless to say, Chris receives funding from Beyond Meat. Okay, so going back to the topic at hand, we are talking about the cholesterol paradox. And you might be wondering, what is the cholesterol paradox? So here's some background and perspective. Uh, there's been several ongoing studies over the past, I would say 10 years, that are finding, particularly in people over the age of 60, that high LDL cholesterol is protective at a certain point. Uh, the upper cut points seem to be around 160 milligrams per deciliter, okay? So uh, for background and perspective from this study that I'm sharing with you on the screen, again, uh, I will transcribe this video and, and do show notes and link all these articles, but we're just doing this live, so just bear with me. Here's the cholesterol paradox. Generally, higher levels of lipid and hypertriglyceridemia were, uh, are acknowledged to be uh, risk factors for cardiovascular disease death. However, in the older population, Cholesterol paradox were reported mainly by observational studies that higher cholesterol levels were not associated with incident and mortality of cardiovascular disease. Systematic review about the uh, about the exact association bet between low density lipoprotein cholesterol and all cause death have identified high LDL with was associated with lower mortality 
in people over the age of 60. The inverse association was not uh, commonly, sorry, I, I copied and pasted these so they're a little off, so that's why I'm slow to read them. The inverse association was not commonly the lipid with death, but in con- was not only among uh, associated with lipid and death, but in cognitive decline as well. And the interpretation therein is that high LDL cholesterol actually helps protect the brain, it turns out. And this goes back to 2006 in the Journal of Neurology, finding high LDL cholesterol is protective against dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Now, this goes against all clinical guidelines because as you know, as you get older, you go to your doctor, your doctor's concerned about your LDL cholesterol, they wanna lower that with the statin, but it turns out that high cholesterol is associated with a reduced prevalence of dementia and Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline. Now, this is a paradoxical association because many primary healthcare practitioners are told to lower patients' LDL cholesterol. And so that's why I want to review with you these cut points. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. Let's do this. I thought this was really interesting. And this is, again, just in men. So that's important to acknowledge. You know, the there might be something a little bit different going on uh, with women. But let's look at, at this uh, chart here. All-cause mortality. Okay. So as you can see here, this particular study, this uh, included, I want to say, 1,700 some odd people tracked over the course of 10 years. And if you look at the cholesterol levels, and what you see here is, I believe this is a Kaplan-Meier curve. You see a survival probability and follow-up uh, since a myocardial infarction. And what you see here, the people with the lowest survival rate had LDL, well, non-HDL cholesterol, so VLDL, LDL, total cholesterol levels uh, under 100 which, lest I remind you, is what most healthcare practitioners are trying to uh, accomplish in terms of their clinical uh, recommendations in terms of lowering your LDL cholesterol levels. Uh, again, hopefully you can see these numbers quite nicely on the screen. Now, it turns out that the people with the highest survival probability had a non hdl cholesterol, again, which includes total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol levels, uh, between 130 and 159. And again, if you go to your family doctor with an LDL cholesterol level of 140, they are going to strongly recommend that you go on a statin. But as you can see here, the survival probability is highest uh, when your cholesterol levels, LDL cholesterol levels are in those uh, ranges, which I think are in interesting uh, to, to discuss. Now, this is one of the more recent papers. We talked about this before, so this may be a little bit redundant if you regularly consume these live sessions, which again, thank you for being here. I'm gonna to get to your live questions very, very soon. This was the Amoris cohort, which is the apolipoprotein mortality risk assessment cohort. Uh, and this is an ongoing uh, study of individuals uh, that have uh, reached 75 years of age and they tracked many people that went on over the course of the duration of the study, which is I think 20 plus years. Uh, many of these individuals went on to um, reach 100 years of age. And so they wanted to look at biomarkers that were associated with exceptional longevity, like being a centenarian. Now, what was interesting in the study, as, as you may recall, uh, is High cholesterol was protective and having a high total cholesterol was associated with a greater odds of becoming a centenarian. As you can see here, uh, TC in the, the box that's in the upper leftmost corner of your screen here, TC total cholesterol, the blue line centenarians tended to have higher total cholesterol, lower serum glucose, uh, as well as lower liver, ends, liver enzymes. Uh, and a few other different biomarkers. So you can see here, uh, GGT, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, that's the liver enzyme that is linked with increased glutathione turnover, possibly oxidative stress. Uh, so lower levels of those liver enzymes are protective and higher total cholesterol, uh, it, as it turns out, uh, is protective. And we're gonna continue to dive into these studies, my friends, but of course, just wanna say thank you for being here. Appreciate you hitting that like button. And we are going to get to your questions very, very soon here. Um, 
Also, since we're talking about metabolic health, just want to remind you about one of the best natural ways to kickstart your fast with the Myoscience Berberine Fasting Accelerator. This also works as an appetite suppressant. Various studies find that berberine, which needless to say has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for the better part of 3,000 years, has a great repertoire for being an appetite suppressant. So during the holiday season when there's ample calories and uh, eggnog and sugar-sweetened beverages and, and the sort, and if you want to help curb the temptation to overconsume those indulgent and fattening uh, foods, check out the Berberine Fasting Accelerator and you can save with the code podcast over at myoscience.com. I will link that in the description below. Okay, so we're going to continue to talk more about cholesterol and get to your questions and all the stuff. But uh, since you are here, I'm going to pop out the chat and I like to you know honor any live questions that come in. And we have quite a few folks on with us. Again, I appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares. Uh, happy that you're here. Joseph Jones, walking with dogs, uh, is is happy that she made the live. I'm happy that you were here as well. Paul Mason has good information on cholesterol. Yes, he uh, sure does, as does uh, David Diamond, uh, David Feldman, all these people. Okay. Now, how easy, hard is it to have too much bad cholesterol? Well, that's why we have the blood work cheat sheet. Uh, and what I might do as we're going along here is I'm going to sh uh, share with you my screen so you can see exactly what uh, what I'm looking at. And I'll clear this other layer so that that's not confusing for you. Okay. So we're going to, um, I just want to remind you that the, uh, let's see. So we're going over here to high intensity health uh, blood work cheat sheet. Download this because what we have here, my friends, uh, is all of the tests that you should be getting from your doctor annually. And, and we include apolipoprotein B. We include different ratios. These are all common tests you can get from LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics. So check that out. Uh, just go to highintensityhealth.com, opt in right here, grab that PDF, okay? So that's something that you should definitely do. And as we're going along, uh, this was a study that came across my feed. Actually, not this one. Uh, this one today, I thought this was really, uh, oop, well, let's see, maybe it's even this one. I download a lot of articles every day. So, yep, this was the one I want to share with you. Make it really, really big. I thought this was a really interesting article. Um, now, just for purposes of nuance and context, uh, this particular study in the Journal of Geriatric Cardiology uh, was analyzing mortality data in uh Chinese adults. And again, they are finding this paradoxical association with high total cholesterol and improved survivability and reduced mortality from cardiovascular disease. So I'm going to leave this on the screen here. Um, just so you can see the study in the background. Uh, you can Google this and you can find this and download this. Uh, again, if your doctors are pressuring you to lower your LDL cholesterol and telling you that uh, uh, cutting back on sugar and carbs, which might increase your LDL cholesterol is going to somehow kill you, even though you're reducing your body fat and improving your cognition and everything. Uh, this article might be a little bit helpful to print out and bring to your next um, doctor visit as I get to your live questions. Okay. Uh, so Frogman8169, how easy, hard is it to have too much bad cholesterol? Well, again, there's no really such thing as bad cholesterol. Cholesterol is essential. Uh, perhaps the metabolic milieu can lead to increased oxidation of LDL cholesterol. And so that's why we do recommend looking at inflammation, ferritin, iron, along with ApoB and apolipoprotein A1. Again, download the blood work cheat sheet right here uh, and you can have that uh, information. Okay, so let's continue on down the line. Again, uh, appreciate the likes. You guys are all here. Uh, Joe Boy says, should you train for a VO2 max test or just do it? Joe Boy, J Boy, a great question. I think you should just do it. I think you should just go out and do your VO2 max, and then that's your baseline. Uh, and then over the next year, train for it. I, you know, that's what I did. I don't know for what it's worth. Uh, every year when I turn, uh, when I make another revolution around the sun, I test my VO2 max. And uh, pleasantly surprised due to, you know, training modalities, walking the dogs, biking to school with my daughter, uh, hiking, you know, with family, friends, my girlfriend in the summer, uh, have increased my VO2 max. So I I think you can do this too, my friends, with no specific training. Okay. So um, I, I would recommend testing this annually. It's 120 bucks. Not a big financial investment. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, 
body be pumping that cloth. Don't mess with it. It won't mess with you. I'm not sure what that means there, Black Star. If you could uh, elaborate, that would be very, very helpful. All right. Okay, so uh, A1 Meat Eater Kid says, uh, if you cut your sugar intake and your carb intake and eat whole foods with heavy emphasis on proteins and fats, your concern with high cholesterol will diminish. You'll feel so good and uh, no one cares. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the story, right? We want to improve our body composition, reduce visceral adiposity, waist circumference, belly fat, uh, improve our overall energy levels. Uh, those are all very important to having a, a, a really healthful life, in my opinion. So that's one thing to absolutely consider. So thank you uh, for that. Okay. Uh, comment here says, there is no paradox at all. The problem is the belief it is causal, which is completely false. Well, I think this is where the nuance matters. I think for some individuals, you know, cholesterol might be a problem because they have a lot of metabolic health related challenges. Uh, and so I think that's where nuance really matters and we can dive in uh, to this particular study here. But I want, want to read to you, you know, here's the results and what happened. Uh, these individuals were tracked uh, for several years they were followed up for uh, about eight years. A total of 4,499 participants were recruited. Uh, and essentially what they found is that older adults with higher total cholesterol levels and HDL cholesterol were associated with lower cardiovascular mortality in normal lipid reference ranges. Higher remnant cholesterol, however, was associated with higher cardiovascular mortality. And so that's why I think it, it is important for people to uh, understand the nuances uh, in the context. And so um, making sure that we are focusing on, uh, you know, the remnant cholesterol can actually be a confusing uh, aspect for people. And so we've, we've talked about uh, that before in the past. And remnant cholesterol, there's a very simple calculation. I'll link the video below. Uh, but essentially what you're taking is your total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol minus LDL cholesterol. And what is remaining uh, is going to be your remnant cholesterol. Uh, and that number can actually um, uh, help you figure out what your remnants are. So remnant cholesterol, uh, it turns out, is highly atherogenic. Uh, and so this is why, you know, in some people with high LDL cholesterol levels, they have also high remnant cholesterol levels. Uh, and so that might be part of the problem. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we're, we're accounting for that and and what is remnant cholesterol? Well, uh, this is linked with atherosclerosis and insulin resistance and fatty liver buildup and all of these things. So um, I will link that other video in this timestamp for about 25 minutes in or some such. So uh, that's a good point to come back to if you want to uh, re-listen to that conversation uh, about the remnant cholesterol and its associations with cardiovascular disease. So uh, good question there. Okay. What else do we have here? Okay, can a statin cause your CoQ10 levels to decrease, which could hurt your heart function? Yeah, so the statins uh, do affect the uh, the biochemical pathway. So this is known as an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. That's the that's the complex jargonistic way to characterize the mechanism of action of a statin. And in that pathway, the uh, the HMG-CoA CoA reductase uh, goes on to synthesize uh, other isoprenoids and other uh, fatty acid moieties, uh, not just cholesterol. And it turns out that coenzyme Q10 is downstream of that pathway. So when individuals do take statins, uh, they should also probably consider taking uh, coenzyme Q10 because we know that coenzyme Q10 is very important for brain function, for metabolic function, for cardiovascular function, for athletic performance. And this is why oftentimes uh, high-end athletes don't take statins. Uh, so for that reason. So yeah, you would want to uh, take coenzyme Q10. Okay. Kate says, I'm almost a year into an animal-based diet. After a couple of years of paleo, found out I have kidney stones and keep reading online that a high animal diet can cause them. Is this true? Yeah, Kate, this is a good question. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily relegated. Uh, you know, some people are genetically more susceptible uh, to getting different stones. And so you would want to uh, see what is the origin of the stone is oftentimes these stones can be uh, enriched in phosphorus or calcium and different minerals. So you do want to see what is the uh, characteristics of the stone and then treat it uh, appropriately. And so 
Uh, some people find taking oral phosphorus can actually help uh, with these stones. Uh, some people find they might need to uh, increase or decrease their vitamin D intake. Uh, there's a lot of different factors that can help uh, with that. So um, I'm not a nephrologist, so I can't give you a lot of specifics here. Um, but I haven't heard that across the board, uh, eating an animal-based diet uh, is linked with kidney stone formation. But uh, again, this is something you want to work with a nephrologist on and sort of characterize the stone to figure out what you can do. Uh, thank you for being here live, Martina. Appreciate you that. Frank Johnson says, Frank Jones says, I asked my doctor for additional, inf additional blood tests like the ones in your list. They said all the tests were not medically relevant and they refused to put in the order. Recommendations on finding a new doctor. Well, I know it is kind of frustrating when you want to just order a simple test, such as a gamma glutamyl transpeptidase test. And so, you know, some of the tests that I recommend are found in common uh, studies. Gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. This is one of the three liver enzymes. This should be run all the time. It's often omitted. Uh, sometimes iron and ferritin, uh, one of which will be run and the other will be omitted. Uh, hemoglobin A1C is often omitted, but you have glucose, right? So, this oftentimes is a challenge, you know, when you go to Kaiser or Polyclinic or these other big uh, institutions where they're really trying to cut costs on uh, diagnostic and testing and things like that. So uh, I recommend just finding an, a new doctor. So using search terms like functional medicine, integrative medicine, low carb doctor, things like that, uh, that's going to help you find a practitioner who's going to be a little bit more open-minded and savvy when it comes to running labs. So uh, great question. Okay. Okay, uh, my doctor said the same thing. Uh, she shrugged her shoulders and wrote them up anyway. I guess I got lucky. Uh, she was, said there was no reason to run that stuff. Yeah, it's it's really sad that doctors will say there's no reason to run an apolipoprotein B to apolipoprotein A1 ratio. This is a $12 test. I mean, I, I've seen it at most cost $16. It's, it's really affordable, uh, but it does give you uh, a better differential diagnosis. I mean, part of the tenant of medicine, mainstream medicine, allopathic medicine is making the correct diagnosis and ensuring uh, that uh, we are not uh, under or over treating patients and, and personalizing medicine. This was a huge facet of the big Obamacare push in, you know, 2009, 2010 uh, is personalized medicine. And so it's important that we personalize medicine by adding a few extra tests on here to make sure that you are metabolically healthy. Okay, Free Will 33 says, are you a dietitian or a medical professional? I'm not a dietitian. I am not a doctor. So take my information. As I said, with a grain of salt, I've been working with health professionals and mentored by health professionals and medical doctors since 2006. But uh, yeah, Free Will 33, if you, uh, I encourage you to do your own research and work with your doctor. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, Nancy says, cholesterol levels over 200 for over 15 years ratio has always been three under five uh, and have, have Nancy's refused meds. It would be very interesting, Nancy, to continue to uh, speak with you over the course of your lifetime. Uh, many people are uh, improving their health and yeah, their cholesterol can actually uh, increase as a consequence of that. But as we have from this ongoing longitudinal study, finding that people with high LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol levels actually survive longer than their counterparts who have lower levels, uh, and they are more likely to see their 100th birthday. So thank you for that comment. Okay. Uh, Evil Fandango says, I suspect many doctors don't keep up with current research. You know, this is a sad reality of medicine is many doctors are well-intended. They go to medical school to help people. They care about their patients. But the practice of medicine has become so bureaucratic and there's so much paperwork and billing and charting and documentation and all this uh, and running the business and dealing with Medicare and Medicare reimbursements and, and the whole thing. So it's hard for doctors uh, to really stay abreast of all of the uh, current uh, research and they only get paid, uh, you know, reimbursed for their visits uh, from insurance companies using V-codes, very minimal money. So they need to see a lot of patients to be able to keep their doors open. So it's not the doctor's fault, it's the system. That's why many great practitioners are going cash only, having concierge practices. So those are the types of people that I recommend you work with personally with your health. It's not to bash the doctors, it's the system. The system is not able to personalize medicine. Okay. In Germany, if statins are prescribed, coenzyme Q10 is also given alongside. Uh, I did not know that, but yeah, that should be frontline medicine. Uh, I, I uh, do think that. Okay. 
To be clear, I told the doctor I would pay because I did not think insurance would be covering all the tests. They refused to take my money, so I placed order online. Yeah, so oftentimes, if you do order these tests and bill them through insurance, you're going to pay a lot of money. It's <laughs> the, the actual costs of these tests that I recommend on the blood work cheat sheet uh, are $250. We're not talking about breaking the bank. I don't want you to go into debt uh, trying to improve your health. I want you to uh, focus on buying whole real foods and gym memberships and vacations, not uh, labs. So everything that we recommend is really affordable. Okay. Let's see here. Any other questions, friends? I see a lot of comments, not necessarily questions. Comments are good as well. Uh, I like your engagement. I like you uh, being here. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at today, my friends. So uh, this paper, we're going to do a deeper dive uh, onto this uh, on this article. And again, what we were looking at here is the Kaplan-Meier curves. And these curves uh, show survivability. Uh, and essentially, uh, what these Kaplan-Meier curves uh, are finding with at least men is that high total cholesterol seems to be protective and is associated with reduced mortality from cardiovascular disease in all causes. Uh, so it's important to have this information at your fingertips next time you go to the doctor and they're freaked out as you've continued to improve your health and reduce your waist circumference and visceral adiposity and lowered your triglycerides and blood glucose levels. But sometimes your cholesterol might increase and that might necessarily not be a bad thing. It could be a good thing. And so as you can see here, the people with the lowest probability of survival in this ongoing study had total cholesterol levels under uh, 100 Okay, so that's really most doctors are aiming for that. So if we're trying to optimize our longevity and reduce mortality, uh, and as this, uh, again, this longitudinal study, 35-year study found total cholesterol levels, uh, uh, higher total cholesterol levels are associated with a uh, higher odds of reaching your 100th birthday, which is what we're aiming for, right? This is why there's all these documentaries on blue zones and, and all this occurring because people want to live longer, healthy lives. Okay. My friends, uh, was that helpful? If it was, please hit that like button. Thank you for sharing this video with a friend who may benefit. Uh, definitely check out the Berberine Fasting Accelerator if you want to help curb those pesky evening food cravings around the holiday season. Two to three capsules in the evening time can help curb food cravings, increase levels of ketones, and support metabolic health. Save with the code podcast at checkout. So my friends, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to the gym. Hopefully you exercised today, and if you did not, now is a good time to do so. So uh, again, appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares. We will catch you on a future live session. Have an awesome evening and rest of your day. Bye now.